great to be here. Um, I have to say, okay. um, at the and end of last, I know they would season, like you to I was open sad your thinking that your, chat your character was gone. So they can give you <laughs> and then at the end of the episode last night, it was um, like oh, a minute or two minutes. Um, and I um, we'll give you a two minute warning if that works. On my timeline, just kind of freaking out. Like, we have about ten minutes. Did you get okay. any indication that you were coming back, or did you know that this was going to happen? Ready? <laughs> at the time. Yeah, this was Janita. This was a this was a plan. Hey. Um, um, hi, I'm Janita year. Davis with the and Black King. My character was supposed to leave at the like so, sort of episode 17 in season two, which he did, and was going to return in episode like 21, but we didn't shoot episode 21. <laughs> so oh. that that few weeks turned into a whole year, and uh, that's been fun. I, I, you know, the writers have been living in that world now for the past year of toying with whether or not Reynolds is coming back, which you saw we did. And then uh, also whether or not he's there to stay now that we know we've seen his face. So uh, they're just going to leave it like that. And it's been it's been so exciting, you know, fans uh, clamoring, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, uh, us playing a photo police on set to try to make sure no pictures got out while I've been filming all this time for the past few months. Um, it, it's It's been a great joy. But more than anything, I'm just excited that uh, I finally can talk about me being on the show again. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that, you know, yeah, the fans are definitely excited. I've got, I got all kinds of messages because I, I interviewed Ryan um, the other day. And so they thought, mm -hmm. do you know if Jocko's mm -hmm. coming back? Is he, you know, I'm like, I, I don't, I'm talking to him this week. I don't know, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> That is a great answer. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's like a big mystery. So I'm glad to see you. And I mean, can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing this season? Maybe. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll figure. I'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we're going to be tackling the the pandemic or the ramifications of the pandemic over the past year. Um, but uh, uh, I've mentioned a couple of times now that, uh, you know, obviously there was a lot that happened in 2020. And that we're still reeling and dealing with and a lot of it has to do with social justice and social is issues uh which we will be tackling but not in the way always that you would imagine uh there's some light-hearted moments that have to deal with black lives matter uh for example that i'm just looking forward to uh some fun stuff some funny stuff and i think that's what we need right now is just to to lighten up just a little bit overall but at the same time uh we're gonna dive head on into those things but uh, I think that you, you'll come out of these uh, episodes feeling informed and entertained at the same time. So I'm excited about that. I am as well. And that, that seems in keeping with the show because your character seems to be, um, they, they seem to be really great at tackling a lot of these big issues in some of the most creative ways. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ones that I loved is the, the, history, the issue of, you know, your, your background when people found out you weren't the, the good black boy, you know, mm -hmm. coming up and, and, you know, kind of dealing with that and, you know, just kind of normalizing um, a lot of, a lot of our reality, you know, mm -hmm. um, I was wondering how much of, how much input do you have in your storyline? I mean, does, does this come from your experience? Do you work with the writers and story and showrunners to, make sure that your character is, you know, authentic. And I mean, how much of them is, is you? Yeah, that's a great question uh, because it's, it's a little bit of a combination of both. Uh, sometimes the writers will see uh, something that you bring um, uh, as far as personality on the set or, or story you tell, and it'll end up in, in, in the show. Um, as Sir, Dr. Reynolds was, uh, a bit more serious, or at least that's the, the the route we were taking them in the beginning. And then um, uh, they'd see I was never serious on set <laughs> and having fun. And, and we wrote a, a season one episode and my birthday episode where uh, I was just having fun and it was comedy and we all had a good time and the writers agreed we're going to definitely do more of that, particularly when I'm there with Iggy or, or Kapoor and, and uh, with Max as well. Uh, there's that. And also in the first uh, episode in the pilot where uh, Reynolds tells Bloom, hey, he's looking for a black family. Uh, and this is why he can't continue this, this relationship. Uh, the creator of the show, David Schulner, actually called me up and said, hey, what do you think about this? Uh, how would you say this? And I gave him my input, my experience about growing up. And we came up with something uh, that we would say that we feel would, would make sense from the character. And, and that was great. More than anything, that just showed me that the door was open if we ever had any issue or if we had some input. And, and it is. We could always email the writers if we have any concerns 
uh, questions, comments, problems, or observations. And, uh, and, and they're always down. For the most part, though, we, we let them do their job because they're damn, damn good at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They are. They are really, really good. Um, and I, I mean, just seeing how they've adapted to the pandemic. I, I just I just kind of love that. Um, so will we get to see what you've been doing? Um, mm. what uh, your character's been doing during the because we got the five minutes of the pandemic for New mm. Amsterdam. But will we eventually get to see what you've been doing during that time? Uh, that'll that'll come out in, in spurts. Uh, it'll come out in conversation. I'll give you a little uh, uh, a example. Um, you know, Reynolds coming back, he's, he's going to be feeling a, a little bit guilty that uh, his colleagues had endured uh, so much heartache. Uh, we lost some co-colleagues, for example. Uh, and, you know, at some point he just breaks down and tells Sharp, he says three. She said three what? Three deaths. That's how many we had at my hospital versus New Amsterdam and, and in real life Bellevue and, and others around here at thousands. And so he's, he's kind of just dealing with that, but you can, you're getting a sense that, you know, look, we all suffered through the pandemic and, and ha- are still are suffering through the pandemic in one way or another, but his was a walk in the park, his experience compared to the rest of them. So you'll see a little bit of that. Okay, so New Amsterdam is not going to be one of these shows that's going to be like pandemic happened. It's done. Let's, you know, move on to something new. Um, Well, 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 (laughs) yeah, I think that I think that in in real life, the the world has changed. I think there's some some parts that will will never be the same. And you're going to see the effects of that on our show as well. We will talk about COVID. We will talk about uh, being vaccinated. We will talk about um, whether or not we're, we're, we're t- testing comes up in several episodes. Have you been tested? That's a common line we ask before we engage with new characters who come into the, the hospital. Um, so that's, a, but at the same time, you know, the writers had this fine line. They had to, had to, to walk um, of, of when the pandemic hit, you know, we were already starting to write scripts then or maybe even before then. And we didn't know we thought we were going to be airing those episodes in the fall so we can kind of get a sense of where this was going and how bad it was going to get at the very least. Well, it turns out that NBC had other plans for us and it kind of moved us to the spring to air. Um, and so, and they needed they needed something for that slot because, you know, because of the pandemic, there's a lot of shows that didn't get to shoot. So they're like, we're going to need New Amsterdam to, to lead into the Olympics because uh, the Olympics will now air this year. Um, so they put us there. But that put the writers in a predicament that like, OK, we don't know how bad the virus is going to be once we start airing. Like the episode we saw last night, mm-hmm. we didn't I, I didn't know who we didn't have an election. I didn't know who was president when we shot that. I didn't know. Uh, and that matters clearly uh-huh. because yeah. one president downplays it, you mm-hmm. know, and that affects the numbers. Obviously, uh, we didn't know if we'd have a vaccine or anything. So the genius behind being able to you know kind of have the pandemic be a backdrop but not say anything too specific about where we stand and Mm -hmm. also not come across dated we're writing stuff in july that just aired last night wow think about that yeah that's that i I don't know how they did that and we shot we wrote it in july shot it in october and it aired last night that's some foresight right there i mean oh my gosh there's some foresight right there Okay, that that kind of took me for a minute, um, <laughs> because I remember that 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 little five minutes said there was some vaccination, a hint of a, vac- a vaccine, not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which which they might have added that they were mm-hmm. able to maybe do that in a montage, but the majority of that script was done. I'll give you one even um, uh, darker than that. Uh, you know, we had a whole pandemic episode that we wrote, and part of it aired in season two. And while we were shooting the pandemic episode, that's when COVID hit. Mm-hmm. And so we we ended up not airing it because it would, people would have thought we were trying to take advantage of the fact that COVID and put out this episode really fast. But uh, and tw- so let me do the math here. In 2019, we wrote an episode of a pandemic of a virus that was taking over New York. We got so overwhelmed in our hospital that we had to hire uh, uh, Cassian, played by actor Daniel Day Kim, to come mm-hmm. to the hospital and help us. Mm-hmm. Wrote that in 2019. Mm-hmm. By the time 2020 comes along and we start shooting that, it actually happened 
<laughs> Cassian, played by Daniel Day Kim, actually got COVID and got sick on the thing. And we said, we can't shoot this. <laughs> we can't air this. This is crazy. Like, what? So that was weird. And then now what they've been able to do. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> okay. Tell them not to write any, any, any more apocalyptic <laughs> To stop. Tell them not to, to, to smooth sailing stop for now. Yes, to stop playing the, just <laughs> some regular doctor stuff from now on, okay? Dear there writers, you go. Just I'm that gonna request from me. Okay. <laughs> All right. um, so I have one last question. I, I'm writing this like larger piece about how telling Black stories and authentic ways on screen, which yours is the most authentic in the, the mm. this medical um, drama um, mm. kind of genre, do you see it do you think that you know you're telling stories authentically like yours do you think it may affect race relations you know in the world outside of tv um especially if other um shows and things start doing the same are you there yeah you? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay great I heard, I heard your question too okay um you never you never know I like to think so, but that's that's a that's another great question because um, I, I, I I'd like to think that some things we, I, I'll put it this way. Uh, the 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 last show that I was on was uh, the the last ship, and I played a lieutenant in the navy, mm-hmm. and there was a couple of things I didn't consider while I was I was being on that show. First of all, we got to by thanks to the secretary of the United States Navy and the U.S. Navy itself, they uh, really embraced our show. Our poster was up at the Pentagon. They loved us. Uh, and I went uh, to film on the ships and the Navy ships in San Diego. And as soon as I walked up on the ships, you know, the the uh, sailors would come up and start saluting me because I looked like I, you know, the real deal. Mm-hmm. And I, and I didn't know what to do, but it was uh, it was overwhelming for me and beautiful to see see all of that. And I was like, wow. And then, uh, so, you know, I'm carrying on shooting these episodes. And I think in the season two, we had our, our Navy advisor, uh, Chad Dulac. He uh, said, um, you know, and this is, this is a, a Caucasian brother. He said, mm-hmm. you know, you, what you're doing, you're affecting our enrollment in, in, in our Navy. Uh, we're seeing a lot of, actually not the enrollment in the Navy. Maybe we did that as well, but he said, we're the, the people who are in the Navy now, we're seeing a lot more African-Americans sign up and want to be uh, lieutenants and officers in wow. the Navy. They, they now want to be officers. Uh-huh. And he said, that's because of, because of you and what you're, what you're doing. And I, obviously it's not me, it's the writers and they cast me and that's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. But um, so I, I think I learned then that, gosh, what you put out does kind of affect the masses in general or, or some aspect of the masses. And, uh, and I would imagine that the, the, if you put out positive messages and positive images, uh, then it would affect them as well. I did hear uh, of a lady who uh, through Twitter or something once uh, told me that her son now wants to be a doctor uh, and didn't imagine that before. So mm-hmm. that, that sort of stuff, I, I would say yes, uh, that we are affecting uh, people and I would hope that through our social uh, stories, social justice stories, for example, that we would affect change in some way or another. Love that. Thank you so much. Um, thank, you. thank you for the, the the great stories that you do play, and for taking time out of this afternoon to answer my you know questions. No, Jenny, thank you so much. Those were fantastic questions, and I hope we can do it again. Yes, yes, soon. Thank you so All much. Right. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you.